the right tackle switches off the defensive end that he has to the guard. Then the guard tries to do the same. But when you do this, it just creates bad angles. Eventually, somebody's going to get him free as the guard didn't really pick up the, the, the guy that they switched. You can see how the blitzing cornerback gets in free, which is something you'll get quite a bit. The guards can't rotate over. And Mahomes is just running for his life. And somehow he gets sandwiched in between three dudes. Still man matching with the guys running down the field, which is why we end up getting this interception. <laughs> For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys a full breakdown of what I think is the best defensive Madden 24 in the Big Nickel Over G. This formation can typically be found in team playbooks like the Raiders and the Chiefs. And I'll try to post on video on screen what I, uh, you know, what playbooks you can find is what I'm talking about it. But I'm using it for my custom playbook right now. Now, before I get into the video, if you guys want to see more videos like this, more breakdowns of defenses and offenses, I try to do a practice mode style video like this at least once a week. Please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. And if you need more help, you can download these or any of my eBooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pin comment. Now, this formation is so diverse. There's probably like 10 plays that I could show, but I have touched on quite a bit. So I'm really going to keep this video to the top two or three that I use most of the game. If I go to my preset audibles, because this is how I like to run it when I run regular games, I have the cover six invert, which is a very unique, uh, you know, really, really unique defense. A lot of people can struggle with that. The cover four quarters and the cover six trap, they're all very similar in regards to um, you're relying heavily on the matching principles of how EA set it up. And then after that, I really only use the SS Blitz 2. And then the play that I typically call when I come out of the huddle, and that's the SS Blitz 3. Now, when it comes to my personnel, I'm gonna wanna switch out this safety here a lot of times. I mean, if I have a really fast safety, you can put a fast safety there and it probably helps out in run defense. But if you don't have a fast safety, you can put a really fast cornerback here. Now, this particular team, I could use Isaiah Rogers, uh, who's a 94 speed. I also have um, Quinion Mitchell, who the Eagles just drafted because I'm using updated rosters. So I could put him, he's a 95 speed at the moment. Uh, I could put anybody fast here because they got two responsibilities coming from this spot most of the time. They're either gonna be going after the quarterback 90% of the time or they're gonna be dropping into middle third cover a lot which is a part of a defensive scheme I'll show you guys that I showed in gameplay last week if you guys want to see that gameplay I will have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video so stick around for that other than that you just want to put these uh, safeties here which one of the reasons I said put a cornerback in this particular spot is because I want to use my safeties I'm gonna have these two guys in the middle here be whatever safeties I got left uh, typically you know I have like a guy like Tristan McCollum who's a, a 91 speed safety and then last but not least for my coaching adjustments I'm gonna to want to put my zone coverage to match um, that's probably the most important. I also leave my auto alignment to base. The fifth play, like I said, I always come out in is my favorite play. It's the SS Blitz 3. I'm going to show this play first. I'm not really going to spend too much time running this because, like I said, I have a lot of game plays out using this defense. I'm just going to show you guys the setups because there are a lot of varying and diverse setups. Now, number one, like I said, I came out in base, which this particular defense doesn't even look like it is in base at the moment, but I guess it is since we have a little bit of an offset look uh, with the safeties. Hopefully it's not too much of a tell or too much of a giveaway. But with this defense, all I'm really going to do is pitch my defensive line, which is D-pad to the left and down, and then I'm typically going to hover the, uh, the the center here until that green bar pops up above my head. If I'm playing run defense, by the way, I mean, it, I try not to get too close because if I get too close, if it's a run play, that, that center is going to jump out and grab me. But if I stay at about a distance here where the green bar pops up, this gives me both the ability to uh, be far enough back that if it's a run play, I can, I can drop back and shoot a gap while also being detected by the center. So if it's a pass play, there's a very good chance that that cornerback can get him free. But he's not really where I want him to be yet. I want to basically align my defense a little bit better for the offensive personnel package that I'm looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit wire triangle that I'm going to press to bring these cornerbacks and safeties down because I want the safeties to get closer to their coverage assignments too. They're standing all the way back there. There's just too much space for them to before they can actually get into um, you know, the, a position to actually do anything. And then I'm also going to hit wire triangle that I'm going to base a line, which typically will bring this safety out. It didn't do it here. But a lot of times when we have receivers out here like this, it will bring him out to kind of match, which hopefully when I show that against a couple other defenses, it'll do that because that's really helpful in coverage. Now, at this point, I got a couple different options. 
I can leave it as is, and the matching principles will do a pretty good job against things like RPOs, which are very popular. I'll show you guys that in a minute because these seam flats do a very good job of matching. If this is a streak by the tight end here, this seam flat is going to do a good job of following that much better than if I do what my next adjustment is going to be, and that's going to be to hard flat. Typically, I like to play underneath against everything except RPOs. Against RPOs, these hard flats are pretty worthless. It doesn't really work out. But against RPO plays, uh, you typically are going to get, um, you know, the 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 uh, the regular setup that I had there. These seam flats do a much better job. Like I said, in, in match coverage in this setup, in the default setup, you get much better uh, matching coverage from the seam flats, but you get worse from the deep zones. The deep zones are much easier to bait when you leave match on, in particular matching cover threes. And I'm not exactly sure why these outsides, these uh, outside thirds, like say this uh, this receiver on the outside here is on a on a zig or something really short, he'll bite on that and like really play down on it hard which you don't want because then a lot of times it'll leave guys wide open so like i said i'll only really leave this to uh to seam flats and not play underneath if it's a rpo or something like that or sometimes i'll leave it if it's like third and long sometimes i'll leave it but you have to be careful that if you run that too much like i said you can get beat badly uh by poorly designed matching principles in madden which happens in all matching defenses which i'll show you guys in a minute but when you do hard flats it overrides the matching principles to the point where these safeties and these cornerbacks won't bite so hard on things like that and you'll basically get better overall coverage in my opinion. So basically I like to leave it like this, and then this is pretty much the play. If I start down in the gap like this, a lot of times that cornerback will come right down the, right off the edge there, as you can see. Everything was pretty much covered, as the play was actually one of the harder to stop plays in the game, in the mesh double drags. But you can see as this play starts, we have the double drags concept, and then we have this guy who's just gonna do a little hook over the middle. So this is a very hard to stop concept, and I'm glad it was the first play that was picked, because you can see how it's pretty boxed. Since I saw that, I pretty much just got in the area where Patrick Mahomes couldn't throw it. And then you can see these double drags are going to get, you know, stopped by these oncoming hard flats. These outside hard flats play at a perfect depth to cut these plays off, uh, which you can see is why Mahomes had to hold it. There's really nothing open on the outside here. You can see this time when I base a line that the, um, you know, the, the safety, the sub package middle linebacker safety did go out, which is what I was expecting. And if I base a line again, you can see how the cornerbacks drop back. The safety stay down, but the cornerbacks drop back, which is going to be much better um, for, you know, them not getting beat deep. It doesn't really um, concern me too much when the receivers are in tight like this. But now that I back them off, I just feel like they're probably in a better position to cover deep. So that's something I also like to do. But, uh, but this is the play. Like I said, I'll run it a couple times just to try to get some uh, pressure. As you can see, I mean, we did get a sack the first play. You can see how the blitzing cornerback just messes everything up. It's not always going to come from the blitzing cornerback. As the last two plays, both times the pressure came from somewhere else. And that's because of the switch off. You can see here the cornerback, he gets recognized to the point where the right tackle switches off the defensive end that he has to the guard. Then the guard tries to do the same. But when you do this, it just creates bad angles. Eventually, somebody's going to get him free as the guard didn't really pick up the, the, the guy that they switched. So a lot of times doing this, it won't be clear cut where the cornerback gets in and gets the pressure. A lot of times it'll be switch pressure because they have to switch off quickly to try to pick up these other guys. And that's why I have... I'm guessing Josh Sweat or oh, Nolan Smith, something like that. Somebody's just coming in free, which is really the whole idea, as we're going to get somebody like this pretty much every single time. But I just want to show you guys that defensive setup first before I get to the next play, which is going to be the SS Blitz 2. And this is a very similar setup as far as just pinching the defensive line and then base aligning so that... Um, you know, this guy here will move out and basically try to match more as both of these defenses are matching defenses. Now, this particular defense, I want to match. I want the soft squats to match. I want this to play how it's supposed to play because matching cover two is, is much better than the matching cover three that I just showed you guys as far as coverage. Now, I have a couple different options here, and I'm going to borrow a defensive concept that I see a lot of people using online right now, and that's basically putting either the X um, into the middle third, which is something that a lot of people are doing with the blitzing cornerback, but that's out of a traditional cover too. I'd rather get heat like I'm going to show you guys here. You can use the same popular Tampa 3 setup that a lot of people are using from this defense while also getting pressure. And to do that, I'm just going to hit wire triangle twice, and then I'm going to hit left on the left stick. Then I'm going to hit wire triangle twice, pick A, and then hit right on, or I'm sorry, left on the right stick. And now I have that same popular Tampa 3 look that a lot of people are running, although I would like to get these cornerbacks in a little bit more closer to their uh, assignment. 
But yeah, this is basically the same thing. I'm going to be covering middle by myself, just like I was against in cover three. But the soft squats are much better at uh, basically man matching, which I'll show you guys here just by running the play a few times. But the blitz is going to work the exact same way. So we have a very popular setup, although uh, Nolan Smith right there just kind of whiffed. And you can see the running back gets nothing once again on the ground. I'll go ahead and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, the setup's really easy. You just have to D-pad to the right twice. Pick your uh, sub package linebacker, put him on middle third. Then wide triangle, pick your safety. Uh, for the one on the left, you just have to left hit the left stick to the left. For the one on the right, you just have to hit the right or the left stick on the on, left on the right stick, which I'll try to show uh, you know with arrows and stuff like that as I'm saying that. But that's pretty much the setup for this. Hopefully we get a pass play here. As you can see, um, we get a short route there. The uh, soft spots will match, but they do tend to prefer uh, over the top routes. So if you want to take away those underneath routes, you just have to hard flat the same way and you'll see how you get pretty much the same look. Now you don't, if you like the matching cover too, you can run it as is. You don't have to do this extra step. I personally don't really use um, this cover three or this Tampa three defense too much because I find that it's you know a lot of people have figured it out to the point where you know here we get that same look it looks like the cornerback finally got in but uh, Patrick Mahomes still somehow threw it away so if we watch the replay here you can see how the blitzing cornerback gets in free which is something you'll get quite a bit the guards can't rotate over and Mahomes is just running for his life and somehow he gets sandwiched in between three dudes so that's pretty much it for the blitz but there's a lot of good matching defenses in here in the cover for quarters, the cover six trap, the cover six invert, which I, I showed you guys are keeping my audibles. I find the cover six invert really confuses a lot of people, but I find that all these defenses can be glitched out because matching principles aren't necessarily the best. So I like to use the cover for quarters probably the second most because number one, it's one of the best run defenses, but it also is a very good pass defense with a very similar setup. So let's go and let's pick that. This is probably gonna be the last play I show, but it's a very similar setup where I'm gonna press to bring these safeties and cornerbacks uh, down before aligning so that the cornerbacks drop back and then hard flatting a lot just to basically override the matching principles because cover three and cover four are very similar where the weakness is outside the underneath the dropping cornerbacks but if I hard flat it'll take that away and it'll also override the matching principles treating this more like a traditional cover four rather than a matching cover four sometimes I'll leave it matching sometimes I won't but let's go and let's see what happens here. Hopefully we'll get some more run plays because that's really the bigger uh, thing here. As you can see, once again, covered sack. Mahomes had nothing, very good defense. Uh, he has to throw it away. Uh, so, you know, like I said, if I do that with uh, the match on, if I just leave this without hard flatting, they'll get probably tighter man matching assignments, but it's easier to glitch out things like cover four. As you can see, the safety is playing down here. It's the safety would have made the tackle if I didn't take over. That's really one of the charms of this defense. Uh, and this is really what I use it for the most is run defense. So let's go back to the replay. It was a run play. Let's watch this guy right here. I didn't guess pass. All I do is just let it run as is. And you can see how this guy immediately shoots down and cuts off the running back. Although, like I said, I tried to use or control it and I messed it up. Or it would have been a loss or at least he would have caught him right at the, right at the sticks. So I'm going to run it one more time. It's up to you guys if you want to override the matching principles by hard flatting or not. Not. If you're playing against somebody and they glitch it out, which, like I said, is somewhat easy uh, to glitch out, then you want to override it every single time because if it, this will make it so that it's harder to hit one play touchdowns against. But if your opponent has one play touchdown for a cup for a match uh, and they're dialing it up, you're definitely going to want to leave that on. But you can see how even with me overriding it, they really play those those receivers pretty tight. So definitely, um, you know, definitely still a really good defense either way, which is what, like I said, I, I really like to use this defense. Hopefully we'll get at least one run play so I can show how these safeties really crash the box. Uh, as you can see right there, I mean, that's, you know, it's just tight coverage. And I, I think that I, you know, I think that I did override that with hard flats, but you can see how they still cover really well in the uh, the back half. So even with overriding the heart to hard flats, and overriding the matching principles, it's still not a straight traditional cover four where they just drop back and try to not let anybody get behind them. As you can see here, they're still man matching with the guys running down the field, which is why we end up getting this interception. So I'm gonna end the video there. If you guys wanna see more practice mode style videos like this in the future, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. And if you wanna see gameplay of these defenses, I have that popping up on screen right now. So just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just wanna show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.